Welcome back to our 87th episode of the Launcher Farm Show, where I interview the founder of Listing Labs, Jess LeNouvelle. In this episode, Jess and I talk about why most agents never achieve their financial goals and the time independence they're usually after in this business, and how you can avoid the same mistakes. Jess also shares how agents can close more sales by simply focusing on creating a foolproof nurture campaign. And Jess shares what fundamental first steps agents should be taking to ensure they lay a solid foundation for success in the long term. And we talk about a super easy way to decide if you should automate, outsource, or eliminate tasks in your business. And Jess shares how you can be more profitable with a very small but effective team and not have to manage all the headaches of a large team. Plus, we talk about a ton of other ideas that you can use to grow your geographic farm. So be sure to check out this episode, like and subscribe, and enjoy the episode with Jess. Welcome back to another episode of the Launcher Farm Show. I'm your host, Ryan Smith, and today we've got a great guest, second time guest on the show. It's Jess Lunavell. Jess is the founder of Listing Lab. So Jess, take a second, tell us a bit about yourself and why you're here. Yeah, awesome. Ryan, thank you. Um, I'm really happy to be back. Um, I, I've i been in the real estate space essentially since I was like, I don't know, I consider it to be a baby. I guess like that's <laughs> me getting old. But got into the business when I was 21. Uh, I kind of grew up in the business a little bit. My mom has been in the industry for about 35 years. And I, I mean, I grew my business in a way that no one was doing at the time. I used social media platforms and digital, digital marketing and, and things like that. Um, this, I just wrote a book, which Ryan and I are going to chat about a little bit, yeah. but, uh, the, the, the foundation for it was basically all the mistakes that I've made. And, <laughs> you know, the first time, the first time I hit seven figures, I did it on my own without leverage, without automation, without team. And it was one of the most miserable points in my life. And it's really interesting because so many people will think, oh my gosh, like I would love to have a seven figure business, but mm. there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. Yep. And uh, the first time I did it was definitely the wrong way. My phone would ring. I would cry because <laughs> I felt like I felt like I just could not possibly talk to one more person. Yeah. And I'd hand the phone to my husband and ask him to answer for me. Wow. Or I would, you know, I, I would go in waves where I just felt like there were periods of time where I had to like hermit or like hibernate because I was so exhausted and it really hurt my relationships with my friends and my family and my husband. And just my quality of life was very, was very low. I lived and breathed for everyone else and, and yeah. not for me. So, you know, this, uh, our programs and everything that we do with the listings lab, but also this book is very much the antithesis of that hustle, grind, crushing it lifestyle. Yeah. And I am a really big believer that there is no human being in the world that is motivated every single day. <laughs> and if we build our businesses off of motivation and working really hard and no pain, no gain, that we're all going to end up extremely unhappy and burnt out, just like I did. So this is really the, the concept of making sure that you're building a business that gets to have that multiple seven figures or, you know, the seven figure profit, like profitable business yeah. um, that serves you and that provides you the lifestyle. And, you know, everybody gets into real estate for three reasons, unlimited income, being able to set your own schedule and, and the, you know, the promise of freedom <laughs> and wanting to help people. Yeah. And I would say 90% of agents never achieve any of those things yeah. <laughs> because Perfect. we become the bottlenecks of the business yeah. and the business ends up being 100% about serving the clients at, at, at whatever cost or getting the commission check at whatever cost. And it's, it's very backwards. I am. Yeah. Um, I hosted a, I, I hosted our listings lab live event in March of 2020. And I opened the event with, I didn't even introduce myself. I got on stage and I said, put up your hand. If you believe that you were put on this earth to sell real estate. <laughs> Not many people. And <laughs> to, no, no. I think maybe one person yeah. put their hand up yeah. and I said, now look around and ask yourself if you, if that's not the case, are you using real estate as is how much time is real estate taking up in your life? And are you using real estate as the vehicle 
Yeah. Or are you being consumed by the business? Exactly. And I think it was a bit of an eye opener for people because so many people build towards a, a business and a lifestyle that they don't actually ultimately want. Yeah. Yeah. That business owns you rather than you owning the business. And it's 100%. And, and, and like you said, it's very hard to maintain that there, you can have bursts where you're like crushing it in the business, but then it then takes over your life. And then if you are doing it at that level, the question is, are you actually happy? And I find there's, I know a lot of agents who, it's, it's the hustle, the grind they put in. And it's like, if you really dive deep, they're, they're trying to fill another void. They're, they're not happy with where they're at. And they're, yes. if they hit the next level, if they hit the next level, then they'll be happy. And the truth is if, if you build it, yeah. you build it, you will be happy and you can have the profit and, and have the business, but you have to do it healthily. And there's a, there's a right way to do it. And you've obviously cracked that code. So that's what I want to dive into and, and talk about what the book is all about. Cause that's really what the, 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 yeah. the, the back, backbone of that. So Talk a bit about what that looks like and and kind of the the framework, and then we can dive into some of the the strategies and things you talk about. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, Just one note, just before we kind of get into it, I am a really big believer in like, I practice what I preach. So four months ago, I moved to the Bahamas. I live on a small island in the Bahamas. My business runs for the most part without me. Um, And I get to do the things every day that like, give me life that I, that I really believe are in my zone of genius. So there is absolutely nothing that I say today that's in the book. That's, you know, that, that is on any social media page that you find about me that isn't 100% authentic because um, like I said, I've made the mistakes. I've lived that version of, of that, of that lifestyle. And um, it was almost like I didn't have a choice. I had to make the changes because I wouldn't have lasted. You paid your so, debts and now you're, um, I, yeah. And I, and honestly, I don't want anybody else to experience that. Yeah. That's why really, I mean, Ryan asked me before we started recording, you know, why did like, we start talking about why I wrote the book and I was not the person who grew up believing that I wanted to write a book. Yeah. If anything, I wanted to be Britney Spears guys, like growing <laughs> up, I wanted to be yeah. like on the stage and with the mic and, you know, and And it's so interesting that I really felt like I had to write the book, that someone had to say the things because it was almost like a moral obligation that I had to make sure that as many people as possible didn't experience what I experienced. And I I see every single day that, you, you know, agents who are quote unquote successful that are so unhappy and so burnt out and so exhausted that you know, what's it for yeah. the seven figures in the bank account or the ego of being able to say, you know, I'm a seven figure agent. It means nothing if you're not happy. Exactly. And if it's not actually like driving you towards like the actual life that you really want. So that's kind of just like my, like my preface, but the book itself is based on the six pillars to seven figures. We actually added a seven. So I, I talk about the six pillars to seven figures, but I added in one extra one right at the beginning. Um, that is, you know, they become the foundation of the house, right? They're, they're the pillars, they're the stilts, they're the foundation, however you want to call, call it. They're what everything else gets built on top of. And that's how you end up with the seven figure, stable, consistent business with freedom. And the predictability of, the, of when you create these pillars well and they're really, really solid is it's, it's almost magical. There's no roller coaster. There's no ups and downs. It's, it's very much a consistent, predictable business that feeds your lifestyle. So I know we don't have time to go through all seven pillars because really I could sit here and dick and read the book to you, but I don't think that that's (laughs) going to be super interesting for anyone, but you know, we start, we start it with the, with the pillar that we call vision. And it's not the super sexy part of like the strategy and like all the stuff that people read business books for, but it is probably the most important piece that people miss or people forget. And, you know, I've been in every program I've, I've taken every program under the sun. And the one thing that I noticed that was a common theme in so many ways was that everybody was building everybody towards one version of what success looks like. Mm. And that's not necessarily what everybody wants. And it was, it wasn't what I wanted. So 
one of the first things that we want you to do, whether you're in our programs or whether you read the book is to get really clear on like, what does the vision look like? Yeah. Where are you three years, five years, 10 years from now? What does your day-to-day look like? What does your business look like? How is your business feeding and serving your life? Because then we can reverse engineer it back from there. The mistake that I think a lot of agents make is that they just start building and they never actually get super clear on what they're building towards. And it's just bigger and more and more and more and more. And, and that's fine. But at some point you may end up five years from now thinking, how did I get here? This isn't what I wanted. And that's hard to undo. Then you don't want to undo the things you've built. And then you uh, their guilt, shame, or oh, I shouldn't have done that or whatever. And it's hard to, if you had that clear vision up front, it's easier to build down the road. Yeah. And, and people ask me all the time, like since, so, so the book launched as of today, like essentially just less than two weeks ago. And I've had so many people ask, who is this for? Is this for the experienced agent? Is it for the new agent? And the truth really is, is and this is not me just trying to sell more books. <laughs> yeah. it, it really can be. <laughs> yeah. It really can be for both. Yeah. Because the, the more experienced agent or the more su- quote unquote successful financially agent, you know, can use the book to make adjustments. Yeah. Because it's you're never a lost cause. I no. hit that seven figures the first time alone. It was awful. And I had to back, I, I had to backtrack not in terms of, of finances, you don't have to move backwards. It's just a matter of like, you know, resetting the foundations of what you're doing and what you're building. So there's that opportunity on that side of it. Now for a newer agents, let's say that you're like a brand new agent. Guess what? You don't have to make the mistakes. You don't have to go through the pain and the suffering, (laughs) right? We get to, we get to kind of skip that or collapse time so that you don't have to go through the mistakes in order to learn the lessons. And so that's really what my answer has been for people who have asked who it's for. Um, I think there's an opportunity to look at the book or to read the book with different angles or different things that you're hoping to get out of it. Yeah. Yeah. You come from different experience and different levels to, to pull 100%. From I know when I, I got started, I was brand new to the business. I joined a team and my boss said, being new is actually one of the best things because you don't have the bad habits. You don't have the bad things in place. You have done the wrong things. And he said, it's a lot harder for seasoned agents. His family it was in the business. He's like to undo what his dad did. He's like, that's, you got a, years of, 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 this is the way I've done it. And it's very difficult for some agents to do that. So you yeah. have that clean slate to start with. For sure. Awesome. You can't teach an old dog, dog, new tricks. Is that <laughs> yeah, sort right, of what exactly. we're... <laughs> yeah, I know it's, and, and, and that's a hundred percent true. And it's a hundred percent correct that it is much harder to make these adjustments when you've been in the business for 30 years, it can be done. And all it takes is a decision that you're going to make changes. But um, yeah, hundred percent, what an opportunity to be a new person in an industry and to be able to learn how to do it the right way the first time. So that vision, I just want to ask quickly then is what does it look like for someone creating that? Cause I mean, we've all heard of creating yeah. plans and then business planning and all that kind of stuff. Like what, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, do you, what do you say differently and how do you avoid making mistakes? We really, your- we really focus on the lifestyle first, which is a little different, right? Everybody can goal set. Everyone can make smart and stretch goals and all of those things. But at the end of the day, it really comes down to what does your day-to-day look like in five years? You know, like what are, how much time are you working? Are you working three hours a day? Are you working, I don't know, six hours a week? Where are you living? Are you living in your current market? Are you traveling more? Are you living, I don't know, on a cruise ship? I don't know what your dreams are. You can do whatever you want. But what does that look like? Who is around you? How much time are you working? What are you doing on a daily basis and inside the business? Like, what is your zone of genius? Mm. If, If you didn't, you have no idea how many people are like, oh, well, I would only be dealing with clients. Really? (laughs) Do you want a path out of production? Does that sound good? Yeah. Oh, is that possible? And anything's possible. Yeah. Right. And so a lot of the time, the visioning work actually requires us to kind of strip down yeah. all of the things that were taught in real estate that like, this is the most effective use of your time, because let's be honest, there's nothing that you can do that someone else can't do Yep. 100%. and maybe can do better. Right. I, my team uh, today, 
there's a whole bunch of people on my team that are smarter than I am <laughs> and that are better at certain things that I, that I, that I'm at. Right. And so yeah. I get to do what I love and I get to create and I get to be the voice and for lack of a better word, the dancing bear. And that's what I love, but you know, you want to sit me down and have me build a spreadsheet. Can I do it? Sure. Yeah. Am I going to enjoy it? Absolutely not. And I'm going to procrastinate it and I'm not going to enjoy it. And it's not going to be done as well as someone who like loves spreadsheets. Right. And so it really comes down to, you know, what does the vision look like? The perfect vision, not the realistic vision. Right. Right. So I did an exercise with our seven figure agent program yesterday. And I said, I want you to write a number down on the top of the page. What is like that big, scary goal? And they wrote it down and I said, now I want you to cross it out and I want you to double it. And all of them went, uh, (laughs) and I was like, because all of you wrote down a number that was somewhat realistic. And when you're being realistic, you're already putting limitations on yourself and the numbers it's, and, and, and great and granted, like it's the number in association with the lifestyle and you know, that 200 to 500, this, and this is going to rough, ruffle some feathers, but that 200 to $500,000 range is actually the most painful place that you can be in your business mm. because you are considered successful. Yeah. And you may even have the ego that goes <laughs> along with, I am successful, yeah. but you probably don't have the resources yet to pull yourself out of the business. So that's why every, like, I, I don't teach seven figures because it's, it's like the ego number. I teach seven figures because it actually allows you to scale super quickly, to make decisions super quickly and to get yourself completely out of the business if you want to, while yeah. still having seven figures in, in income that feeds your lifestyle and to do minimal things or the only the highest value things in the business that you really love to do. And I think for most people, they don't even consider that to be the dream because they don't even consider that to be possible. That's, that's what I was thinking as you were saying that is that some people set the goal because they think that's what they're capable of and then don't know they can do that and then build their business around what they think they can do, not what's possible. And there's a difference between what you think you can do and what you can actually do. If you put the right things in place and the right systems in place and, and step out of it, but it comes with that, that vision. Like you said, if you don't have that in place up front, you'll just kind of follow along with where you thought and you'll probably end up there. So if you aim bigger, yeah. you'll, you'll put the systems in place and, and, and build it correctly from the beginning. Exactly. And, and I think also you'll make decisions differently. Right. I think that there's also this kind of old school idea of how to build a real estate business mm. of, you know, you get to a certain point where you become the bottleneck, you hire an assistant. That's actually not correct for, 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 for everybody. Yeah. And a lot of the time when we do an energy audit or a task audit, which we actually included in the book um, as a download, when we do that full audit, we look at things in terms of, well, what are the values of every task? If we're going to put like an actual numerical value on everything and can it be eliminated? Can it be automated? Can it be outsourced? Yeah. And a lot of people will go to the outsource first because a lot of the training and a lot of the teaching that we've all been exposed to or are still being exposed to uh, was created or built in the eighties and the nineties. And so the automation wasn't there. The tech was very different. Heck we, a lot of us, when we started selling real estate, like the internet was not this, like what it (laughs) like even close to what it is today. So a lot of those trainings are super outdated, but they're still being kind of regurgitated because there's not a lot of, real estate's behind. It always is. It's not a super, it's not the tech industry. It's not a super forward, forward momentum industry. So, you know, instead of that, we want to look at, okay, can it be outsourced? Can it be, sorry, can it be automated? And there's so many people, so many teams out there that are paying someone a full-time salary, whether that's $20 an hour or $50,000 a year, or however you're paying someone to do a job or a series of jobs that a piece of software could do for a hundred dollars a month. Yeah. And not only is that time inefficient, but it's also super financially inefficient. Yeah. 
And so when we look at the, the idea of, you know, efficiency within the business from time, energy, bandwidth, money, you know, all of those things, we approach it differently than we would have probably even 10 years ago. Yeah. Because we have these, all of these amazing tools and so much more opportunity than we, we've ever had before. And when I use the word automation, I want to make it very clear. I'm not talking about your CRM. (laughs) So many people are like, I don't need that. I have my CRM. And I'm like, your CRM is a client management system. It is not the automation for the back end of your business, (laughs) right? There is so much more available to you than that. But but again, it, it just, it comes down to people are just not exposed to enough and enough possibility to even know what pushing that vision could look like. So that's really where we want to start because once we have that super clear and we're really excited about that, then we can reverse engineer everything else from there. And every decision you make and every pivot you make in your business and every opportunity that comes at you is a yes or a no based on, is it going to get me closer to that? Yeah. And it, it eliminates all this, the shiny object syndrome that 99.9% of agents struggle with. Yeah, of, those, you know, I'm going to buy this and I'm going to try. Yeah. Those, yeah. Those are things that agents get hung up on, on those decisions. And they're the ones that really, like you said, are, could be, should be just yes or no questions. And then they hung up on, should I, how can I, when I'm going to get, and then they spend more time on those things that are, could be just, is it good for the business? Yes or no. And then make a decision that way. And they, they use their, their brain energy yeah. and their, their emotions and their time on things that it should be a clear, is this benefiting the business or is it not? And if you, like you said, if you do it correctly, it becomes a lot easier to make those decisions. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I think that a lot of the time we're kind of spraying and praying in real estate, right? Yep. I'm trying, I, and, and those clarity pieces in terms of where you're going, why you're doing it, you know, the old school version of it is, you know, know your why. Yeah. But this is like a whole other level of that. It's, it's not only, well, my kids are my why. And this, I'm doing it for my kids. Well, but what does that mean? Right. And a lot of the time people feel like they have to, their, their why has to be some form of martyrdom and that their why can't be themselves too. Yeah. <laughs> and, and honestly, like I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a big believer in that. I'm a really big believer that like, you are the best version of yourself as a friend, as a spouse, as a mother, as a father, you know, as everything, when you are a fully actualized, happy human being. So what do you want? And then how you being the happiest, best version, richest version, whatever that looks like of yourself, yeah. how is that going to impact and have a ripple effect on everyone around you? Yeah. That's, that's great. And it, it's, it takes that courage to think outside the box and step outside that, like you said, that traditional way of thinking and seeing it. And sometimes it's fear that's holding you back. Sometimes it's just, you just don't know. Mm. And sometimes like you said, if you don't have that vision yeah. in place to do that, you won't see the, the bigger picture. You won't see that. And you'll, you'll have that. hundred yeah. percent. And, and so often people will say to me, you're so lucky. Or I'm so jealous that you live in the Bahamas. And and I'm like, "Uh uh-uh, you don't get to call me lucky. (laughs) Because I actually, I know know that the the intention behind it is like so pure. But to me, I hear you think that that I happened upon this. Yeah. And this this was intentionality for years. And I got clear that this is where I was going to be years ago. And every single thing that I've done has been to get me here. Yeah. And so there was absolutely no luck to do with it. Yeah. It was, you know, and, and I think sometimes what happens is we look at other people and we think that's not for me. I don't get to have that. I need to be more realistic. And, and I hate that. Like dream <laughs> the big crazy dream and like, you know, well, let's get you there. Yeah. And, you know, 10 years from now, I want you to look back and be like, oh my gosh, imagine us being able to, to, to believe that we could be here 10 years ago. And so the vision becomes like the, the primary pillar that everything else comes after. And yeah, I mean, we've got, and last time we talked, we talked a lot about marketing and, you know, marketing is one of those foundational pillars. Of course, that's yeah. becomes the lifeblood of your business, but 
There's also, you know, the, there's, there's team hiring and leadership. Are, do you have the right people in the right seats? Are you, you know, are you ready to bring those people on? It's that then we've got the systems and the operations, you know, that's the automation piece that I was just talking about. You know, you know, the automation happens before the outsource. Right. So we want to take a look at how do we create the most efficient business? And even from like a super basic standpoint, are you treating your business like a real business? Yeah. Like, what are you building? And I think most agents are building some sort of a hustle. They're building yes. some sort of yeah. successful hustle, but they're not actually building a real foundational business. And one of the things that, you know, that I would say 50% of agents treat a hundred percent of their commission as personal income. Yeah. And even just that one thing is a game changer. Yeah. If you pay, if your business pays you out of the profits of, you know, what the business earns, and then you reinvest a portion of that back into the growth of your business, it's a game changer because you're also not emotionally attached to every dollar that you spend in your business. I have so many conversations where people are saying, you know, I have to ask my husband or my wife if I can invest in my business. And I'm like, but I don't understand <laughs> because isn't that business money? And yeah. so what, what's happening is people are, are, are literally taking what they perceive as food out of their family's mouths yeah. to reinvest in their business when they're completely two separate things. Exactly. Personal money and business money are separate. That's one of the things I, one of my mantras that I, I talk about is your farm should fund your farm. So when you're farming, you should be taking a portion yeah. of all your farm, all your proceeds that goes into your farm account. That's separate because what happens, I've seen it. I'm sure you've seen it, that agents get started with any type of marketing, any type of venture, any type of thing. They put away their money in their bank account. And then when things aren't going as smoothly as, or they may not, maybe a, a month or two where things slow down, then they have to question if they're going to pull it out of their personal bank account. That's when their partner's going, uh, yeah. we need that. And it's like, if that was set aside from your farm account, set aside, and you know, you put that money away, yeah. then it comes out of that. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to question it. It's that's a separate account. And uh, I, I believe a lot of agents, mm-hmm don't do that. And they go, I'll wait till I get busier. I'll wait till I get more money. Then I'll start putting away more money, investing into it. And mm-hmm. if you start from the beginning, even if it's a small amount, that, that small amount can. can exactly. I, I was yeah. at a conference. So your commission. Years. Yeah. It should be. A yeah. Percent, your commission should always be. Well, no, your commission goes into the business account. Exactly. And then you pay yourself pay exactly. from the business account. Yep. Right. And, and um, you know, I, I think that there's, when we get into real estate, there's so many holes in how we're taught to do things. Yeah. And we're really, we're taught how to not get sued in yeah. order to get our license. <laughs> yeah. And that's really all we got taught that's when, when much, we yeah. get our license. <laughs> but then from there, like we're not ever really taught how to run a business. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's, there's so many little things that we can do that sets us up for success down the road that it's, it's shocking how, how many people like it's, it's not, it's not just common knowledge and, and, and no judgment because where would you get the common knowledge from if it's not being taught to you by the people that you're, that you're learning from? Exactly. And that's when people go to a brokerage expecting that's what they're going to learn. And they think that's going to, and it's, unfortunately it's on you. There are very few brokerages or teams that even teach that very few teams Mm -hmm. even run at, at that level as well. Very few teams run their team as a business. So if the teams aren't even doing that as an individual agent, it's very hard to see and model that. So you have to look outside of that and you have to start thinking as quickly as you can. Like you said, as a new agent, the sooner you adapt, adopt those things, the better your business is going to be. It it takes, it takes a different mindset. Like you said, upfront and you got to do that right away. Well, and, and it's, it's, you know, those are the beginning, like the very, very beginning pieces. And then we get to, you, you, basically what you're doing within a real estate team is you're, you're, you're setting up an organization mm-hmm. and I want you to, every person listening to this, you are not a small business. If you think of your business as a small business, it will always be a small business. Yeah. I want you to set up the business to be this big powerhouse of a business because the decisions that you make will be different and you will grow into that. Yeah. And when you, when you only think of your business as a small business, you will always remain that. And, and the bigger the business is, you know, the, the more freedom that you have, and also the more, the more people you're helping and the more impact you have, 
And it doesn't have to be directly from you. The ripple effect that you create by creating a bigger, more successful, more leveraged business is huge. And imagine how much impact you can have and what kind of a legacy you leave that way, as opposed to, you know, staying small and playing small. So I want to ask you a loaded question then, because I get this from a lot of agents who say, yeah. I don't want that because I, it's too much work. It's too much time, or I yeah. don't have the skill yeah. set, or I don't have the, the ability to do that. That's not what I want. How do you, how would you address agents saying that then? Well, then, I mean, sure. There's going to be people, I get people all the time who are like, I don't, I don't want a team. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. Um, <laughs> they're like, it's, I'm like, why? Well, it's too much work and you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, actually having a team should be less work. Mm -hmm. If I didn't have my team, my business would be a 10th of the size that it is. And, um, and I would be working 10 times more hours than I am. Yeah. And so by not building a team, you are building yourself a golden cage. Yeah. Because you will always be the band, the, sorry, the bottleneck of your business. And every single thing that you do in your business will have to be started, worked on and completed by you. And this is why I see so many single agents trying to outsource to marketing agencies and to, you know, and then getting frustrated and wasting money and, you know, spinning their wheels because they haven't grown and they don't see the value of time back, efficiency, mm -hmm happiness that comes from actually a small amount of leverage. I'm not talking like you need to build a team of 15 people. I yeah. teach small lean teams. I don't love giant teams. I Same. would rather have, and I had this conversation with a guy in a guy named Chris in one of my programs two days ago. I was like, you know, why would you want 10 agents on your team doing 10 deals each when you could have two agents on your team doing 50 deals each? Yeah, exactly. The same number of deals. Yeah. It's the same outcome with a smaller number of people who are happier, yeah. more taken care of, and that you are genuinely changing the course of their lives. Yeah. Like I would rather that than to spread it out. And I think, again, there's this ego thing of having the great big, huge team that, you know, like I, I, I have this poor girl that, I, that came to me the other day and she's, she's on a team and she's like, I haven't done a deal this year. Wow. And I was like, well, that's bad leadership. And it's, you know, I, and I feel for you, maybe you should find another team that is going to, that, that understands investing in the people that, that are in the team. And, and, you know, you should be doing a minimum of 20 to 25 deals a year yeah. on a team. Yep. That's uh, the point. That's exactly. And that's, I remember there was back in the day when I was at a company I used to be at, there was two teams in the office. And one was doing 180 deals a year and had like 15 people. Yeah. The other one was doing about 150 deals a year, mm -hmm. but had five people. And I was like, why would I want to be a hundred and yeah, yeah, you get more deals, but it's like, but yeah, but per deal, <laughs> and, and just the amount of time overhead, the, the headaches, the hassle, trying to lead people who aren't, aren't productive or don't want to be productive. It's way more work than focusing on people who do want to be productive and giving them, like you said, the tools and the resources. And then because you're making more profit off each one, you can invest more back into those people. If you're just making a profit, and live person, a, us a way better lifestyle. Imagine exactly. having to answer the questions or be the, the point person for, for 15 people as opposed to two people. Exactly. Exactly. I would Take much rather from a freedom standpoint, have two or three people on my team than have, you know, 40 people on my team that are constantly wanting something from me that, that probably aren't being super resourceful because they're not doing a lot of business. Yeah. Right. It, it just comes down again to efficiency. More people does not necessarily mean more success. So then how do you get people to build the business that can funnel that? Because obviously you teach those kind of things. A lot of agents struggle with, they mm -hmm. can lead people, they can, they can help train them, they can do that. But then I find agents sometimes struggle with the, plat the, the, the pillar of, okay, how do I fill the pipeline for those people? I, I can do it on my own because of relationships so and that, friends yeah. and that kind of stuff. So how do you, how do you fill that gap? So there's, there's 
there's so many cool ways to look at this. So you have your marketing pillar, which is essentially going to be new people coming into your world, those people being nurtured and essentially like psychologically being taken from stranger to client. Yep. So that's marketing. But I asked this question um, on a mastermind I held the other day and people were like, literally like gobsmacked. I was like, so let's say you did 50 deals last year. What would happen to your business if you got one referral? from every single person you did a deal with last year. You would start the year at exactly the same thing that you did last year and probably double your business this year with no outlay. So how can we look at the business in different, like, and so I have a training that I do called the six levers. And basically what it is, is it's six different levers that you can pull within your business to exponentially grow your business. And so what we sometimes will do is we'll audit those levers. There's lead generation, there is nurture, there's sales, there's delivery, um, then there's referrals and there's repeats. And so we have all of these different sections that we get to play with. And let's say that sales that your team is converting, you know, buyer consultations or listing presentations at 70%. What would happen if we bumped that to 90% and we worked on that 20% difference? Well, there's a certain amount of business that is then going to create a jump. And that's not from more leads or more marketing or more anything. I think sometimes what people don't look at is the efficiencies within the business. Everyone's first thought process is I need more leads. But what's the leads experience like when they become a lead? Yeah, exactly. Because if you don't have your nurture campaigns really, really tight and you don't have a psychological journey from stranger to client and you don't have people becoming a lead and then becoming an inbound client and your sales process isn't dialed in and your delivery isn't banging, then all of these things are connected and more leads just become more wasted money because all of these other things aren't, aren't tight. Right. So we get to look at the whole thing holistically as a whole and the trickle down effect of everything, which is the fun part. Exactly. That's what, that's what I love about It's the breaking it down and looking at those small pieces. I I remember I was doing uh, exercise with a a client and I was saying you could literally double your business by increasing it 10%. And I went through seven steps that they could, where they could increase their business 10% and each of that process over 10% is like, you don't have to be twice as good, twice as much work, twice as many deals, twice as many hours that the output can be massive with those small changes, but you have to know where to look and have to, to be willing to look at those and then go, okay, how do I make those small changes? Exactly. So my best friend, she calls it the, the small hinge that swings big doors. Yeah. Right. And I love to look at that. Like, what is that small thing that is going to have a massive impact on the actual outcome at the end of the day in the business? And there there's there's so many of them. There's so many things that we can play with. Business is a game. And if you're not playing the game and you don't enjoy the problem solving and the puzzle <laughs> yeah. in the game, yeah. get out. Yeah. Because if, if this stuff isn't fun for you, then, you know, we need to get you a path out of production and you need to be a figurehead yeah. because the day-to-day of this business is going to get to you. Um, you know, there are some team leads that need to be just, just the face, the dancing bear. There are some team leads that need to be operations managers, right? And there are some team leads that, that should, you know, that, that should have a different role within the business. Everybody mm-hmm. has different strengths and weaknesses. There's not one way to build a team. Yep. And I think that that's also something that we've been kind of taught yep. is that is that you know that's one way. I also believe that your the team lead should never be the highest producer on the team. Mm. Right? That 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 just means that the team itself isn't properly leveraged right. and you haven't really achieved what the point of a team is. Yep. That's a good point. And they, they may have gone through through the trenches and then learned how to do a it. Phase. But they can, yeah, but yeah. exactly. It's, it's That shouldn't be the end result or the end goal. Yeah. And it, and yeah. like you said, if, if you're leveraged correctly, those people should be doing more than you were able to do on your own too, because they've got the leverage and the resources exactly. in place. So they should be able to handle more than you as a solo agent or a small team could could do as well. That's exactly. That's, that's a good way of looking at exactly. it. Exactly. I find too, that with a lot of agents that they it becomes an ego thing if someone does more than them too. And then they don't want more, anyone to mm-hmm. out- outproduce them. So they sometimes I've seen it there. They've surround themselves with people who will never produce more than them because they want to be the figurehead. They want to be the person who they want to be the big fish. Yeah. And it's, I'd rather have people who are outproducing me and, and make more money and being successful. And then, but now I think 
you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think a lot of agents are afraid of those, those people leaving and taking their systems and things like that as well. So how would you yeah. create a system that, that doesn't happen or that's mitigates as much of that? Cause I find I've seen a lot of agents say, I don't want to grow and train people because then they're just going to take off and leave and then do their own thing. So that's a fundamental issue with leadership and culture yeah. and like, you know, like that's, if, if that's happening, then it, the, it, that person was the wrong person in the, in the beginning. Right. So it's part of, part of that is the hiring process and fi- finding right. the right person to put in the right seat. Um, understanding that if you sell a vision yeah. that is so much bigger than some, what somebody can accomplish on their own, they will stay. Yeah. My head of operations, Ashley who essentially runs the back end of my business now. She's absolutely amazing. She took a pay cut to start working with me. Wow. She's been with me for years. And when I, I mean, she's making more now, but when she first started working with me, she was making less and she did it because she believed in the vision of the company and she believed in what I was building. And so it mattered more to her to be able to show up to work every day and build something that was bigger than herself and that was going to have a bigger ripple effect and a bigger impact that that was more important than an extra couple thousand dollars a year. And together we have built something that has actually created more wealth and more freedom for both of us. And that is the win-win aspect of, you know, when you build a team, getting the right people in the right seats and keeping it small, Yeah. right? If somebody feels like a number, then they're, they're, the loyalty and the relationship and the connection, and it's not going to be there. But if, if you have a really tight knit team that works together, that I don't like to use the word family because yeah. you can't fire your family, <laughs> but there's, <laughs> yeah. there's an element yeah. there of like, of, of really, really tight connection yeah. and moving in the, in the same direction for their same goals and a win-win for everybody, you won't have a lot of churn on your team. Yeah. And that, that was a big aha for me. And that it comes back to that vision that you said at the beginning. And when you have that vision yeah. that's bigger than a normal, bigger than that, and you can grow it, it's easier to attract the people who can see that vision and see the opportunity. And yeah, if, if you have a, an average vision or, or, or sub average vision, then you're going to attract people who have that same thing. So that vision is so critical. And that's a, yeah. why it is one of those, those key cornerstone pillars for you. So yeah. If you were to give people last piece of advice, if they're they're looking to grow, grow their business and change from where they are now to, to, to go forward, what advice would you give them? Um, that's a hard one. <laughs> Other than read my book. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> can I, pl- can I plug the book? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I, I would say, um, <laughs> I would say it would be to um, think outside the box. You know, kind of strip down all of that, you know, strip down all of that stuff that, that were kind of pre-programmed after being in real estate for so long Mm -hmm. and really remember that, um, results take, take results. Don't take time. They take courage. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the time we get held back because we're scared of something and we don't feel brave enough to make a change or something is scary. And, you know, that's the whole point. You're an entrepreneur. You got into business because you have a higher, you have a higher risk tolerance than someone working an office job. So, you know, take the risks, take calculated risks, get clear on your vision and um, be courageous. That's awesome. Don't be afraid to make mistakes and look stupid. That's yeah. the whole point. That's you get you to grow. learn from it. <laughs> yep. And that's when you get people saying yeah. you're lucky. It must be nice because you took the risks and yeah. they didn't. Well, exactly. So we always wrap up with the best book. So feel free to plug your book. Let people know how they can get a hold of it yes! and get their hands on it. <laughs> okay. So this book is called More Money, Less Hustle becoming the seven figure real estate agent. So it's basically like the title kind of says it all. It's everything I've been talking about since we came, since we started talking, um, you can get it on Amazon. I will give, I will give Ryan the, the link so that we can drop it in the show notes. Um, got lots of really good reviews. People are loving it. It's kind of scary putting a book out there. Cause you never really <laughs> yeah. know, right? You're like, yeah. okay, well, I think this is great, but are people going to think that this is horrible so far? So good. Everyone seems to be loving it. Awesome. Um, and yeah. I mean, connect with me, show me that you're reading the book. I, I, I respond to every single Instagram message I get yes. every Facebook message I get. I, I want to see that you are reading it and enjoying it and 
you know, I, I, it makes me feel good. It makes, makes it worth it. Good. Awesome. And I know a lot of people that I know have been reading it and I've seen lots of reviews online in the Facebook groups I'm part of, and people really appreciating and enjoying the book. And if you want to give yourself a plug, that is, was number one on, you said for Canada and us for real estate, it's a, it's hitting it big is. numbers. So people, people are loving it. So that's, which is awesome. So how can our viewers check out Thank what you. you're up to connect with you and find out more about what you're doing? Yeah. I mean, I would say Instagram is always a good place. Um, at Jess Lunavell, um, or my Facebook group, which is just the listings lab method for real estate agents. Okay, there's awesome. as of today, there's about 25,000 agents in there. Um, and it's collaborative and full of trainings and fun stuff. Yeah, it's a good group. It's good. Lots of, lots, lots of good stuff going on there. So I'll put that in the show notes. I'll put the book in the show notes so people can check it out. Thank you. And I want to thank you for being on again. It's been awesome to have you back on the show and I'm super excited to hear about your success with the book. And I know it's a, it's going to be a great read when people, when, actually apply it and, and put the pillars in place and they can have the success. So thank you for being on and sharing your insights and wisdom with our audience. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for checking out today's episode. If you'd like more videos like this, be sure to sub- like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out our Facebook page and our other social media channels. Looking forward to bringing you more great content like this and happy farming. Happy farming.